What up with the wheelhouse, baby? You guys ready to hit it? You ready to get it? You ready to level up and get with it? Well, it is time to charge those batteries and get the money printed out because we are headed to the moon to stack chips and get paid out. Now, on this channel, no baby stepping, no line stepping, no loose talk, no second thoughts, and definitely no maybes. And like I always say, green lights to the beach baby all right so if it's your first time on the channel do myself and yourself a favor hit subscribe and select all if you want to know about something specific a ticker commodity an index uh crypto put it in the comments let me know i'll uh, i'll look at it um <clears throat> hope everybody's doing well and uh just wanted to get on here and just, you know, look at a market update, look at some charts. I'll show you what I got going in uh, one account and then the other account um, on the charts. And uh, but I always like to look at the indexes because, you know, I'm a big believer in keeping an eye on your macros and understanding what's going on on those and what happens in the economy will show up in the indexes, especially the S&P and the Dow, um, you know. I don't have to go through it every day, but we, you know, we're we're in this trend. Our new primary trend is the downtrend. We're making lower highs. We pivoted here. We rejected. Came all the way down to this one. Now I drew these blue lines a while ago. I actually looked at the video. Um, it's uh, I don't know if it's you know a month or two ago. Uh, it's called um, something 30, 30, 30 reasons market tops or whatever. And in that video. Uh, all this is gone and I'm telling you like it's gonna come down and I'm drawing this stuff in live on that video and I'm saying that this thing and, and mind you it, it was like uh, I think it was right here okay and and I and I drew these lines in and I was like yo we could like we could actually come all the way to the, the peak before COVID and actually this pivot low right here come all the way down and uh, I hope that we don't, but I mean, we are making lower highs and it's very possible this could bounce and then reject off this and come down and reject off this and come down and then, you know, we, we run. And that, that would be a savage drop. But quite frankly, look, we're losing 800 points in a day, 500, 600 points in a day. And it's almost every day. Like we were at three thirty six thousand nine eighty, So basically 37,000. And we're at 32,800 right now. So we've already had a major, major drop. I think it's gonna be bumpy for the rest of the year, um, which is totally fine because I'm navigating this thing really well. Um, I, most, of, most of the stuff I'm in is longs right now, but they're commodities. I'm in like lumber, copper, nickel, sugar, fertilizer, pesticides, um, palladium, gold, uh, minerals, mining, silver, uh, oil, energy, of course, transportation. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the ones that I have. They're all really good. Um, if you guys didn't get a chance to watch my video yesterday called the G method, um, you guys should really watch that video. Uh, it was a good video. And, um, I want to say thank you and congratulations to all the new Jedis that signed up. Uh, a lot of people are just tired of losing money and just want to learn the right way and, and how to do it. Um, I'm constantly getting feedback from all the Jedi's that have been in there for a long, long time. And they're like, man, this system is like killing it for me. I'm making money. I heard that three times from three different Jedi's today, two times yesterday, like the day before every day. And now a lot of people are signing up and, and it, it's really good because I already know the system works. I already know because I'm making money and it's so good to hear people be grateful and thankful that they're now, you know, it takes a little time to learn. Um, you know, we got to kind of pull stuff out of people's minds about the way they do things and kind of <clears throat> learn a different way, you know, but once they do that, uh, they start, they start seeing it and they start, 
entering when they see something they start exiting when they, they become less emotional they stay in the right sector they're looking for momentum they understand the technicals and and they're starting to make money and it's it's quite it's quite remarkable to see and i'm just really grateful and proud of everybody that's signing up and uh, going through that that personal journey on their own and uh, it's, it's it's nice to watch so <clears throat> yeah so look, all the indexes uh, got wrecked today. Uh, it was quite interesting, a lot of volatility. It was a big swing up in energy and then a big swing down. I have a ton of energy. Um, I saw <clears throat> I saw this portfolio over on this computer. Um, in the morning, it was up. <clears throat> I don't really remember, but it was it was up a good amount. And I wanna say it was up like, it was up like 3% or something like that. And then it dropped like, I lost the 3% and it came down like 2 or 3%, like in the overall portfolio, which was crazy because I'm loaded up with wheat and coal and, you know, like going against semiconductors, energy, gas, shipping, uh, steel brought me down. But I mean, steel's going to go up. I mean, there's... Um, commodity indexes... Uh, triple leverage it. I mean, I'll, we'll just go through it all. I mean, I have the S doubt. I have a bunch of stuff. So I was surprised to see it go down, but it rallied back. And at the end, um, you know, at the end, I, I'm, I'm up a, like in between 40 and 50 grand. So it's, it's, it still was a good day, but it was up like 138 grand at one point. And then it dropped where I was negative and I was negative a lot, like a hundred grand or something. And then uh, it, it came back. Uh, I had to cut some losses. Uh, so I did take some losses, but you know, I have a way and I teach you, you cut losses. You don't even care. Like if it's a perfect chart and everything is beautiful and you love it, but for some reason it goes against you and the max is 8%. When I see that percentage get to like six, it's like DEF CON for me. I'm like, oh, what is that? I can't have that in my portfolio. <laughs> Sell, <laughs> get it out of here. <laughs> I'll just rebuy it you know, at some point in the future. Something's wrong with it. it's not going right. Even if everything seems right, that's just going to happen. That's like trading, guys. Like That's why I can't sit here and say, I make money on every trade. Because no, I don't. I lose trades every single day. I just win more trades every day than I lose. Or I win more trades every week than I lose. Or I win more trades every month than I lose. Or I win more trades every year than I lose. So daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, I'm winning more than I'm losing, therefore it's offsetting and I'm growing it, you know? And I'm doing that by being in the right sector. I'm doing that by spotting momentum, technical analysis. At some point, we'll get back to fundamental analysis, but that's just not the game right now. But I, I like that game. Uh, that's the way I like to do things is like swing trading and like the top composite ratings and RS ratings. And I that's what I really like and I want to get to it. but. This is a technical market. This is catalyst driven, um, you know, a lot of stuff. And, you know, when you're Yoda, when you're a Shaolin Ninja rooftop warrior, you you take the fear, you absorb the fear and you turn it into money. That's what I do. <laughs> like every time there's some crazy fear thing going on, I'm like, I just think about it. I'm like, oh. They're going to do an oil embargo? Let me tell you something. I'm just going to tell you something. Let me just be real. I'm just going to straight up tell you. You know I always tell you real on this channel. And pretty much just about every single thing, probably 99, 98, 99% of the stuff I tell you, when I tell you on this channel, if you see it, when it comes out, it will surface in the future. And I'm just going to tell you straight up right now that if we have an oil embargo, the market will completely break. Okay, now, markets are resilient. <laughs> they can handle a lot. Um, I mean, it would seem like they were gonna break in the whole Biden-Trump thing. Uh, there's been a, I mean, there's been a million things that you know felt like it was gonna break, but markets are resilient. The thing is, is we have underlying weakness. A lot of stocks are under the 200. It's not fundamentally driven. All red tides sink ships. There's a lot going on politically, uh, economically, geopolitically. When I say politically, I meant geopolitically. Um, you know, uh, on the world stage, there's a lot going on. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's th this Russian-Ukraine thing has really set it all off. I mean, it's just really set it all off. 
And um, there's a lot of drastic measures being taken <clears throat> uh, very quickly. I'm not saying drastic in like it's a bad decision or a good decision. I'm just saying they're, they're very abrupt, like very sharp uh, action plans are taking place very quickly. And that's, you know, that's unsettling for the market, right? <clears throat> so we already have so much weakness and we're making lower highs and our downtrend is the new primary trend is a downtrend. Um, we can't, the market, when I say we can't take much more, okay, it just can't, it can't take another thing like, like uh, World War III or a nuclear uh, explosion or uh, an oil embargo, okay? So the last time that we had an oil embargo, um, we also had the, the most devastating stock market crash that has ever happened to that date since 1929. Okay, and it was in the early 70s, and um, it was at the time that um, we also had inflation. It's, it's actually kind of similar to right now. Check this out. There was Vietnam. Right now, you have Russia, Ukraine. So we both, there was two. There's wars then and now. Oil embargo then and possibly now. And there was high inflation then, high inflation now. And there was a Fed, a hawkish Fed, that was tightening up monetary policy then and about to now. Every single thing is identical and it was the worst stock market crash to date. There's been years after that. I think the, the dot com was really bad. I think the 08 one was really bad. Uh, but the one in 72, that's exactly what it was. It was a war. <clears throat> no, 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 wait. Oh, no, 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 no. The war was a couple years before that. I, the, the war was a couple years before that. It was the Nixon Watergate scandal. Okay, yeah, we had, we had a, I got it confused. Okay, so, so in, in the late 60s, we had a hawkish, we had inflation, the hawkish Fed policy and, um, and Vietnam. And then in 72, we had the Nixon Watergate scandal and we had the oil embargo and that broke the market. I mean, it broke it, guys. Like an oil embargo, listen, uh, if there's an oil embargo, the whole world is gonna suffer, okay? The gas prices are gonna go up. Um, everything is gonna be inflated. Do not be surprised if um, inflation hits like peaks that just are outstanding, uh, astounding. Uh, they're gonna probably, you know, get. it's probably gonna say something like 10%, but if they say 10%, I mean, we've got to be over 25, you know? And um, supply chain shortages are not going to subside very easy with the conflict up in uh, Russia and Ukraine. And uh, that goes for things like palladium and wheat and uh, fertilizers and oil and energy. And uh, it's going to be really intense if there is an embargo. And my belief is it will be that final straw that breaks the market. Um, cause an oil embargo is, is a big deal. It's a big, big deal. Um, uh, the U S goes through, I can't remember. I think it's 80, 80% 80 of the whole world supply is consumed in America or something. Uh, I, I gotta look it up and sound a little bit more intelligent, but it's either 80% is consumed of the oil supply is consumed by the U.S. or it's 80% of all the oil in the U.S. is imported for consumption. It's one one of the two. I'll look it up. It's it's either way. It's bad. And if there's an oil embargo and most of a lot of our oil comes from Russia, it's going to be really really bad. Uh, not just for inflation and the pump, you know, the gas pump, but uh. Um, it's going to be really bad on equities in the stock market. Now, how do you play it? Well, I've been telling you in my last couple of videos exactly how to play it, exactly what I'm doing, um, exactly how I'm doing it. Look, there is no shame in staying out. We're in a crash. We're in a bear market, guys. Just, just you either short it or you eliminate everything and you just, you just play the indexes and short it like I showed you. Or if you're long, you can hedge with the indexes with this amount of money, you can double down with the, the SPXU, the SQQQ, and the SDAO, and I think it's the TZA for the small caps. Um, I don't wanna to get too technical, there's a few other really good ones, but um, you could you could do that, and that's how you can keep your equity curve low, and um, that way it's not like dropping all violently and going up, you just, if you got a bunch of longs and they're going down, you just throw those on to hedge, and these ones will go up, and then when these start to go up, you pull those off and take your profit, let these go up, and as soon as they come down, throw the hedges back on. 
And then these will go up, these will go down. And as soon as this comes up, you take your profit and you let it go up and you just stair step your way out of trouble. You start picking off the ones that are just barely profitable or a slight loss or even whatever. And you start de-risking. That's how you do it. It's how you hedge. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm like really good at hedging these days. I had no idea that this was going to be something that I uh, became so good at. But um, this market, this market uh, put me to the corner, put me in a corner. I had no decision. I had to literally like master that very fast because I had a large portfolio at risk. Um, multiple times when the market turned and this is how I get myself out of trouble. So like yesterday when it was up 138 grand and then it lost all that went down 97 grand, you better believe I was throwing hedges in there. I was like, Oh shoot. Boom. Boom. I already had those hedges in there. What I did was I just increased the volume. I increased it. And then the ones that were, that were uh, actually, they weren't running high, but they were in a big uptrend and I'll show you on the charts. What I would do, and I'm sorry if this is all confusing. If you're like new, I'm just, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So I'm just speaking to you as if you really, you know, just understand markets and technical analysis. I'm trying to explain it the best I can. But a lot of stocks that I was um, hot and heavy on, let's go look at this uh, Fidelity one. So <clears throat> as an example, okay, here's a good example. So this one is just parabolic, right? And at one point, at one point, I was up so much on this thing. This thing was up 92% today. And I just bought it today, okay? And let's go to a one hour because I can't even, it's crazy on that. So, so at one point, this thing was up 92% today and it ended up 50.85, okay? These two, these candles, like this one coming down, this big wick, and this one and this one were, were they, you know, it, it went from like, I just bought it and it was in my second highest position in my portfolio out of nowhere. So what happened is when this thing came down, like it came down and I was watching it on the minutes, there was a point and I think it was right here. I think it was right here. When this turned right here, I bought more. I had, I bought more. I bought 500 more shares. And I did that because I literally bought the dip in an uptrend. And it's trending up so heavy that, I mean, it's, it's hard to, you know, I'm like, oh, God, I better buy more. Because, I mean, look, this thing is Indonesian energy. Okay, basically what that means is it's nickel. Okay, nickel is a supply that's going to be in high, high demand right now. Nickel, I bought sugar too. I bought sugar. I've never been a commodities trader. I really like it. I'm not going to lie. I really like it. I've always wanted to trade Forex too. And I got to say, I am, I am becoming like the, just the nastiest crypto trader. Dude, I don't know. I really, my system, I designed it for stocks and I always love crypto and crypto and dabble in it. But oh my God, my system on crypto is so nasty, guys. Okay, let me just tell you a couple trades. I had a trade, I went up 86 Gs. I had another one and these aren't in order. I had another one, I think it was 68. Another one was, I think 48, they're all eights. And then I had another one that ended in a two and I think it was 72 grand. Like. Dude, I can hit the momentum on the technicals on, on crypto so good. I know exactly how to do it. And I do the same thing with the hedging on the cryptos. So what I do is I have like, like five or six that I like that all are correlated with Bitcoin. And when I see what I want on Bitcoin, I push into all of them. Okay, so they all start to go up. And then what I do is I take one that that is also correlated with Bitcoin, but has a lot of weight to it. And, and when they all go up and they start to turn, I throw in a hedge and I, sh I, I short that one. So I'm making money down as these ones are coming down. And then as soon as they turn and go up, I pull off this hedge, take my profit and I let it run. I do the same thing, um, but, but backwards instead of the longs coming. Yeah, so yeah, and that's working. And, um, and, I, and I'm really good with getting out into the profit. Um, my, my crypto trades are pretty much always profitable. I don't even think I've had a loss on a crypto trade I can't even remember the last time I took a loss on a crypto trade. I was at a loss on one, but I, I held out because I was shorting. And I, I what happened was, um, let me see if I can explain this to you. Guys, I just get on, um, I just get on uh, YouTube and I just talk. I don't have it all planned out. So, so I was shorting on Bitcoin at one point. I don't know where because I'm not in a trade right now. I was shorting and then something like this maybe started happening where it went up and I was losing money. And, but it wasn't Bitcoin. I think it was Cardano. Um, 
or a, uh, AVAX or, or something like that or Ave or something. So, so it started doing this and I started kind of like losing money. Um, and then what happened? So, okay. So I was short. Oh yeah. And it went up and I start, I, I lost any profits I had and I went into the red and I was like, Oh, should I, should I take the L? It was steeper than this. This is like a little baby one. It was more, it was more savage. It was like this, but maybe even bigger. It was like printing candles. Like it was uh, like this whole like thing was turning. And I was like, oh shit, you know, like what have I done? I was backwards a lot. I was backwards like almost 40 grand on it. And um, and you know what I did? I, I, I took a deep breath and I was like, look, man, like check it out. Why don't you just listen to yourself? Like you are a trend trader. So why don't you just zoom out and just realize that you're in a downtrend? And even if it has this thing, you still don't have blue blue ribbons on the daily, you're in an overall downtrend. Well, lo and behold, after two days went by, this thing was like only 11 grand negative and then seven grand and then it was like 3,800 negative and then it was like 1,100 negative and it was like bouncing. Then all of a sudden it was profitable 3,700 and I closed it, boom. Because I was in an overall downtrend and I teach, my, I teach that in the system. Like if you're gonna go long on the hourly, you should be in an overall uptrend on the daily it's safer and the probability of your win rate will be higher. So since I was short on the hourly, but I was losing money, instead of just taking the L, I took a deep breath and I looked at the, the daily downtrend was like, bro, you're still in a downtrend. And it's been a downtrend for a long time. It's like looking at Bitcoin right now and here's the purple ribbon. And it's like, okay, this is like, like two and a half, three months, whatever. And you know, this is happening and you're going backwards, you're losing a bunch of money on your short. And then you're like, well, wait a minute, the ribbon's still purple. And every other time that it comes up, it stayed purple and it got scary. And every look, even right here where it tightened, it still felt. And I, I mean, I'm very hopeful for Bitcoin. I'm going to be in it for as long as, uh, as I can trade it, as long as there's no weird regulation that stops me from it. I'm going to be in this thing forever. I love trading crypto. If you guys, um, want to learn how to trade, uh, technical analysis, stocks, crypto, dude, get in the discord. Let me teach you. I'm so in the zone. I am so in the zone right now. I, I literally have my game so freaking tight. Let me show you some trades. Okay. So, okay. This one says, uh, 494% up. I actually don't own this. Uh, one of the Jedi's gave me this. That's another thing about being a Jedi is these, um, these guys, they're good. Like they're getting good. They're showing me charts. They're hunting stuff that I can't keep track of everything. I can keep track of a lot and I make the trade alerts, buy this, sell this, you know, here's your stop loss and whatever. But they're showing me a lot of charts and this is when they showed me and now I'm interested. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, it's a straight up line. I want to tell you guys, when you see a straight up line like this, it's going to come down. Like don't, don't, <laughs> don't get it confused. Don't get all FOMO. You got to be smart with how you play it. When something goes like this, it's going to come down like this. Like, believe me, it always does 10 out of 10 times. That doesn't mean that it can't keep doing this for like a month or six months. It just, it just, <laughs> it, the way the market works is it's going to find a fair value. It's going to rock it up. It's going to rock it down. It's going to do this until it, until it finds like a happy medium. Okay. So this might go way up and then it might come way down and then come way up and then way down and way down. And it might find a number at 963 would be the fair market value that it starts to, starts to trade at, you know? So, this is high volatility, high momentum. So, you know, either take a tiny position and then if it comes down, you know, make sure you're off the pivot, you know, it's got to pivot. So you got to wait for it to create its first higher low and then get like a trend line. So, so let's say it comes down like this. Okay. And, and then, you know, you have something like that. Okay. And then let me see if I could just, do this for you. Okay. So like, imagine like you have like this and it's like, okay. So, so right here, oops. I don't know how you fix that. Okay. So right here, it's like lower high and then boom, see that one right there and it comes up and touches it again. That's your first higher low. So this is your pivot. I guess it would look like, I suppose it would look better if I kind of did it like this. Um, 
you know, maybe some, maybe something more like that, you know, like, well, I don't think it'd make a higher high. <laughs> Sorry, whatever. But you see what I'm saying? It comes down, it finds a pivot. You don't just buy right there because you don't know that it's right there. The way that you know with technical analysis is it comes up, it doesn't go past this normally. I mean, if it does, it's super bullish, but it doesn't normally do that. What it does is it comes down and this one is higher than that. And now it's created right here. Right here, it's created, boom, boom, it's first higher low, okay? So now you have a new direction and you've established a pivot. So if you wanna buy this and you wanna get 10% or 25%, okay, I understand, it could rally. And if it does, you're in 25% and you're running up. But if it doesn't, you gotta wait for this thing to come down, find a floor, hopefully it's two wicks, so you have like a, a little bit of a floor, okay? Um, like maybe it'll go boom and then boom and it'll establish a floor. But you know, it may do that, it may not, but mainly you just want it to make that first higher low and you want to identify that, that you've pivoted and you're in a new direction and then you buy right there your other 75%. So if you did, if you fumbled in at 25%, you wait for the process, the higher low, and then you come off that pivot into momentum and then, you know, it's like, that will do you, you know, you're good to go. That's, that's definitely a good way to do it. I, I use that technique all the time. I have a lot of techniques to like, get into momentum to profit heavy. Uh, if something goes wrong, um, I have to assess it. You always have to assess when trading, right? So so a lot of the things that I do to assess is I'm looking at the different time frames to relax me. I, I try to buy and sell everything on the hourly, but I'm using the daily a lot right now to kind of keep things calm for me. So as an example, let's look at a few of them. So this one is that, nickel one and again like this thing is just on fire guys like it, everything i'm messing with is going up too much let's see if we can find something a little bit more regular yeah so even even that's profitable but i want to show you something a little bit everything is so extreme right now and it's great for a trader like me because i'm like a momentum hunter so i'm all about like momentum but god i don't know if you guys can see like this wick right here meant this thing was at 2333 i mean that's a I mean, if three dollars is sixteen bucks, I mean, we're talking about a dollar. So, you know, we're talking about you know five and a quarter percent. You know, just this wick down. So, let's say you FOMO in bought here. Well, yeah, you need to pay attention. So, so what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get to, is if you're buying on the hourly, and you're like, oh, it needs to be above the two hundred. I need a blue ribbon. So you enter. And then all of a sudden it starts falling on you. Well, you can always zoom out and feel a little bit more confident that on the daily, you're still above the 200 and in an uptrend. You wanna trade with the trend. That's rule number one, okay? And then you wanna use common sense, like right here is SOXS, you know, semiconductors are coming down. Why are semiconductors coming down, Chris? Well, they're coming down because there's a supply shortage and part of that supply shortage has been exaggerated with an overreaction because 41% of all the palladium comes out of Russia and palladium is used in semiconductors. So therefore, if semiconductors are going down, instead of shorting all of them, you just buy SOXS and you just make money and it's cheap, it's five bucks you know, to buy it. So another one, it's the inverse, I mean this one, this is another good one, look at the daily. If you ever see an inverse above the 200 in a blue ribbon on the daily, you're in a bear run, guys, like straight up. Like I, I never see this for years. I have not seen this. Look at the last time that if it's under it. Okay, so if, if the price section is under this 200, that means you're in a bull run. The last time that it did it was March 13th in 2020, it was COVID. And then it came all the way down because this was a bull run. And now look, for the first time, it's going above it. That means you're back in a bear run, okay? Wheat, another one. I'm just, I'm, dude, I'm holding these overnight. See how I have a tag purple? Tag purple means for me that I don't have to stress. Tag purple means, Chris, you were in an overall uptrend on the daily. You're in the right sector. It's the right thing to buy. You're at the beginning of a blue ribbon on the daily, you're above the 200, your volume's right. I check everything out. If it's in my list and I'm buying it, putting my money in, then I, I'm pretty confident it's gonna go up. Uh, I feel good about that and uh, I buy it. 
And if I really like it, I keep buying it. I scale in. And, um, and I've done really well with wheat. Wheat, has, it actually made it to my number one position, but it's been, it's been going between like number one and five. And uh, that INDO one over here actually like, was in the one two three um but btu which is which got wrecked today it was the lowest it dropped 16 and a half percent this one i've been like just killing it with like i've been killing it with this one but you know on the hourly i i was like you know i tell you guys like right here to get out or you can get out when this turns red but i'm i'm not even tripping because btu is cold and this is like a shakeout. And if you zoom out to the daily, baby, we're in an uptrend. And if it comes down and prints a couple purple candles in an uptrend, well, guess what? I'm going to start probably getting back to using stop losses. You know, right now, I'll probably have a stop over here. If it comes and prints a couple purple candles and then goes up in a blue one, I'll move the stop here and maybe even scale in. I mean, I'll get back to my old ways, you know, like, you know, that the way I normally do it in a, in a regular market. This, in my mind, is a bull run right here. Even though, like, everything is in a bear run and you got to know what to pick and how to spot it like I'm showing you. But the stuff I'm showing you is in a bull run, guys. Okay, so the reason I picked up this, and, I, and just so you know, I didn't pick up a lot. I, got, I did not get a lot of this. Um, uh, it's Oh, I didn't even put it on the chart. Okay. Well, I only got a thousand shares of it, but the only reason I got this one is because I guess Google might be buying them. So, um, let's see, we went through that Yang. Okay, I want to talk to you about, guys a little bit about this. Okay, so I bought Yang. I made an alert for everybody in the jet in the um, the, w the wheelhouse Discord, and um, the reason I bought Yang is because it is a bet against China. And I know that China, you know, they have economic problems and they're a globe of major global economy. And, and just so you know, I'm not talking anything bad about China. Every country in this world is about to have a global recession. Every country in this world is going to be a systemic. OK, the problems that we're about to have. OK, check this out. I went to the bank. I wanted to, I, had, I needed to deposit some cash like nine, ten grand cash today. And when I went in there, I had to go twice. Um, I went in the first time, and when I was in line, there was two different people that I was waiting behind. And uh, I overheard these two people, they were both men, and uh, they each said, uh, I need to pull money out of my savings, okay? Now, when I came back, because I went to go pay a bill and they didn't accept cash, so I went back to the bank so I could, um, you know, put in my, I have a, a budget, I do all my bills in a budget in one account, and I'm just very like that so that I can keep track of everything and I don't have people just trying to take stuff out. So I go, to the, I go and I do that. So I go and I put that in, and while I'm waiting, there's another person and he goes, I need to pull money out of my savings. How much can I pull out of my savings? She says, well, how much do you need? He says, six grand. She goes, yeah, no problem. So what I'm getting at is people are at the bank. I don't get out much. I stay at my house a lot. I don't go to the bank very often. It's very rare. Uh, I usually do everything from my computer, wires, whatever. But I had to go there, and, um, and I had to do that. So um, people are pulling out of their savings. Okay, well, right before I went to the bank, I went to the gas station. Okay, and um, my my everyday car is a Bentley Continental GT, um, and uh, it's a very sporty car. It's about a quarter million for the car, um, and you know I got we have our own like where I live. We have a couple of bars inside of the gates uh, in the community. We have a couple of restaurants in here, and we have our own like gas station too. Uh, and then we also have like on the lake, like if you drive the boat, we have our own gas station on the water where you can just pull up to the, the floating dock and you can like gas up right there on the water too. Well, I go to this gas station, uh, liquor store thing, and uh, um, six bucks a gallon, six bucks a gallon. And, you know, the Bentley is like really, really good. Like if you're driving to Vegas, like you're going to burn a quarter tank getting to the freeway. But when you're on the freeway, you're still going to have a quarter tank left four, three, four hundred miles up the road in Vegas. Like it's really good when you're flowing on the freeway, but it's not good in the in the red light, green light thing. It's just not um, as great. 
Um, you know, so I, the high price for me to fill up the tank in the Bentley used to be, it used to, I mean, the high price, the high, high price that I can remember was like 80 bucks. Okay. And, um, we're, we're hitting, we're hitting like over a hundred now. Okay. So I went to the bank and I felt that then I, or I went to the gas station and felt that then I went to the bank and heard that. So it's affecting everybody. Okay. And we're just at the beginning. Okay. Let me show you guys something. Let me show you something. Okay. Let's go look at the, the NASDAQ real quick. All right. <clears throat> All right. So imagine right here, and I'm sure a lot of you did this. Imagine you get the, the pandemic. Nobody knows what's happening. You're in a free fall. Everything sucks. Hopefully you had cash on the side. You got out of margin. They came out. They stimulated the economy in round one, and it was like a V shape, and it was off to a major, major run out of this, which was, you know, fairly quick but quite scary. And you got in at the blue ribbon above the 200, which is at the same time, and you you just ran this whole thing. You just trusted the blue ribbon the whole time. Okay. Well, imagine that you shorted at the beginning of the purple ribbon, and know that the purple ribbon usually goes just as long down as the blue one goes up. Well. I told you guys that back here, but essentially what I'm saying is we, we're kind of like at the beginning of the purple ribbon, okay? We're at the beginning of all these lower highs and all this drama. It's very possible this, this NASDAQ could come all the way down here to the 98.95, guys, okay? It's possible. It, it might just come down to this right here, 12.398. I just don't see a lot of... I don't see a lot of positivity going on out there right now. Um, I didn't get that. Could you try again? Sorry, Siri's uh, talking apparently. Um, I don't see a lot of positivity going on. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, the Asian markets are coming down right now. Um, so, you know, look, if we get an oil embargo, it's going to be really bad. It's going to be the thing that's going to break the market. Um, the Fed, I mean, the Fed is like the big elephant in the room and the rate hikes. Uh, but, you know, the, the Fed really has their hands full. They go too fast with the rate hikes, guaranteed recession. They do an oil embargo, guaranteed recession. Uh, I think that we're definitely uh, in that stagflation era, guys. Um, I, I, I have... Uh, I hate to say it. Um, I don't know why they're not talking. Maybe I'm wrong, but they're not talking about it on the news. But um, I think that we're – maybe I should look at the charts a little bit more. But I think we, we could be coming to that big, that big monster crash that happens uh, every 20 years or so, um, the secular bear. And, uh, you know, you want to know how to hedge. You want to know – like I'm long. On most of my stuff, I'm long. Check it out. I only have one short open right now in, in a market that's coming down. That's that's because I know where to be long. But if I didn't know where to be long, like like the last couple of months because it was so volatile and there was no bull run on any charts, then I was shorting and, and I was hedging to protect. But now there's a bull run in commodities, so I'm long on those because I know where to be. If you know where to be, um, you know, you're, you're going to you know have better success. So. Um, this is what I have, just so you know. So this is this is all the stuff I have in, in one account right here. I have INDO, and sorry that I'm like you know, all over the place. I, I I guess I should probably like write down like a schedule of what I'm going to talk about. I just I just get on here. And I'm like, yo, what up, guys? How you doing? Everybody good? Let's just chat about some stocks. That's what's cool about the Discord. It's like a community of traders. We all just like chat and talk and hang out and show each other charts and. We talk about politics and we talk about this stuff up in uh, Ukraine, Russia, and we talk about global stuff. And just so you know, like a lot of people in there are, uh, I'm from the US, but there's people in there from New Zealand, Austria, Croatia, Norway, Sweden, Japan, uh, several people from Australia, um, a bunch from the United States, um, Canada, several from Canada, uh, Mexico, uh, uh, Germany, we have we have uh, some people from Germany in there. So yeah, I mean, we got people from all over the place, and we we talk stocks and crypto and markets, and we also just be are becoming like friends, you know. And there's guys and girls in there, and we're just chopping it up. And if you want to be part of like a community or a family kind of thing, and 
you know, it's really good because sometimes like I'm so busy clicking through things and trying to help people and, you know, answer their questions. Like sometimes it's good. Like I just ask, you know, some of the guys that, that are in there that I've trained and they've become really good and, you know, training wheels are off with these guys. And I'm like, hey, what do you think of this chart? And, you know, your fresh perspective. And, and some of the guys in there, they'll be like, well, yeah, it looks like it could catch resistance here, but you know, we're gonna have to see if we catch volume, we can get a breakout over here. And I'm like, dude, that's exactly what I was thinking, you know, like, so it, it's like a trading community. We, you know, it's, it's just cool, you know, it's just cool. If you wanna upgrade guys, it's 99 a month, you get all the courses, okay? I showed you, if you wanna see all the courses and everything and the alerts and everything, just go to yesterday's video, the G method. But you get all the courses, you get 10 hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, we can, look at your portfolio, we can just uh, figure out like, you know, what's what's going on, like, you know, what, whatever you want to talk about, you know, what's going on, uh, if there's a problem, what's the solution, where, where you should be, how you should be thinking. Um, and then, you know, you get the trade alerts, which is cool, super good. Uh, all the Wheelhouse Wednesdays, which is group training, we all just kick it for like three hours every Wednesday night live, and I, I teach them technical analysis and stuff like that. Plus you get all the elite and Jedi chat areas and that's where everybody hangs out. All, every, most people in the group are upgraded. So most people hang out in the Jedi area, but you can come in there for free and the general chat, the stock chat and the crypto chat are open for free. And if, if you ever tag me, Chris Wheelhouse, Chris Wheelhouse, I think is my, my name in there, then um, I'll see it probably on my phone and I'll, I'll come and talk to you. I try to talk to everybody, whether they're upgraded or not. I don't, I don't really care about that. I wanna help people. I do want people to upgrade, but I, I, I do want people to be comfortable in the Discord and, and I want you to feel comfortable to ask me or DM me anything. And if somebody is purple, they're a moderator and all the moderators are super cool too. Um, so yeah, enough about that, but I have INDO, that's nickel, okay, BBAI, I just got it. Um, it's technology services, I, I don't even know what it is, but I just like that momentum, you know, it came off in earnings. Uh, MNDT, this is something that Google's trying to buy. Um, SOXS, that's the one where semiconductors are coming down, so this is going up. Webs is an uh, internet bear on the Dow, it's a triple leverage bear, so Dow's coming down, internet companies coming down, so this is going up. Wheat, we already talked about that. Most of the wheat is exported by us from Ukraine. Um, Yang, it's uh, you're betting that China is going to come down, which they've already announced on TV that it is going to come down and they've actually forecasted it. So it's like a common sense of that. And a lot of people are getting in on this. Like s smart investors know, like, like if China is going to come out and say, yes, our GDP is going to drop to, you know, 3.5 and we're going to work for X amount of years to get it back to, to 5.5, like, <laughs> trust me, buy Yang, <laughs> it's easy money. Same thing, like when you see the lower highs on the NASDAQ, by SQQQ. I mean, this thing's running, guys. ChargePoint, I picked it up, not a ton, but I picked it up and, you know, again, I do everything off the minutes and, um, you know, it's, it's you know, this is why. So, SDAO, you're betting that the Dow's gonna come down. This is the stuff I have in one account. Um, new, next era energy. Now, I had it and I sold it. You can see where I sold it right there. And then it came down and I sold it. You can see I did pretty good um, when it kind of went purple. And then I re oh, there's the blue one right there. So let me just take this off so we can see it. See the little blue one? So I rebought it there, which is right here on this candle. So I rebought it. Um, and then this is a really good one that I bought like a week ago, CF Industries. I think it's a fertilizer is what it is. Um, super uptrend, super uptrend. Here, I'll put the ribs back on for you guys. I think it's easier to see on the the, the video stuff. Um, uptrend, guys, I mean, it's just banging. Uh, Nutrien, another fertilizer. I'm doing really good with it. Um, uptrend, I mean, I just want to show you on the daily because I tagged them purple and if they're tagged purple, I don't stress about them. I'm just leaving stuff open overnight and I have, uh, okay, so <laughs> again, I, I apologize if I'm all over the place, but for many months, um, as you know, the market has been hella volatile and I haven't been able to hold overnight. I've been day trading, intraday trading. I've been getting out, closing my trades. Well, I finally am at a place where I'm finding technicals and bull runs in the commodity section. So I'm actually holding overnight and trusting the system. Um, and I now have, and, and, it, and maybe this isn't a lot to you, but I have, uh, let me look. I 
I have 12 of my positions are in double digits. Uh, so over 10%. So like 17.48%, 16.62%, 31.79%, 32.33%, double digits. That's because I'm getting to hold overnight. So the longer you hold and you're in the right trend, like you can take those to 100%, 2, 3, 400%. I mean, not always they'll do that, but I mean, you'll have to play it day by day. But yeah, I'm leaving them on overnight. And it's so nice to see that things are going double digit on me. I got a whole bunch of them that are about to go double digit too. They're in the 9.89, 9.65, 8.55, 8.46, 7.38, 7.31, 6.74. 7 so, and out of all, it's like a mutual fund, I have so many, because because there's a lot of hot stuff out there. There's a lot of ways to make money. So I have a lot of stocks open, but check this out. When I look at all the green, when I scroll through and I look at the red, there's like, there's like, maybe, maybe 10, I'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I, there's 11 red and there's probably like 30. I yeah, probably have about 46, so there's like 30 green. And the ones that are red, uh, I don't have anything that is below 4.08% in the red. And um, a lot of them are 0 0.07, 0 0.8, 33, 0 0.68, 0 0.96, 1.44. So not like the reds are not really bad and they are in a super uptrend and they're tagged purple. So I don't have to worry. And if all goes well, like the shit storm that we're enduring right now, all these catalysts continue and all goes well and the stock, those stocks will go up and pretty soon they could all be there and I'll just be taking profits soon. So again, I can teach you, I can coach you. Um, I want I want people to make money. Like I know this is a tough market. Not everybody's used to like a bear run and all these like strategies and all these things you have to know and do like in, in runs like this. But um, we're we're in a we're in a, a pretty rough stock market. And I don't want you guys to get out of the market. I want to teach you how to make money in any market. You know, and the charts I'm showing you are obviously trending up. So this one is J Nug. It's a triple leverage miner for gold for. Um, Gold miner, yeah, and and I'm I'm back in it. I bought it before. You can see I bought it here. I sold it here right before the purple candle. Good job. And then I just rebought it. Just rebought it because we're getting above the 200 on the daily. And uh, I think gold is a really good thing. And why not be triple leverage on something that historically has always been good during economic turmoil? So uh, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you guys this, but UTSL is a triple leverage utility. And it's in my freaking top 10 for gainers right now. Hold on. It is number 10. It is number 10. I'm up 10.58% on this thing, guys, on a utility. So I don't love utilities. I don't love water. I don't love coal. I don't love steel and lumber. I don't love fertilizer and pesticides. I don't love palladium. But I love money and I love momentum. And I go where the money is. I follow the money. And it's 10.58%. 10 it's up. It's a triple leverage utility play. For God's sakes. It's sick. Okay. KLXE. Look at the momentum, guys. Somehow I'm down on it. Oh, I averaged down. I averaged down on this. Because for some reason, I bought it. And I think I got it up higher. And then it fell on me. And I had to double down. And I'm still down on this thing. Okay, well, we're watching that. But but look, it does, does it really matter? Because you're in oil and gas production. You have a blue ribbon. You have massive volume. You have a huge, I mean, you're above, this price action is huge above the 200. And you're in the right sector. So you're overall, you're trending up. So I'm down a little bit. But I mean, what is that, a half a percent? It's not that crazy. So, I mean, it's it's going to be okay, I think. Um, I just picked this up. I really like this. Guys, write this one down. I think this is a good one for us. It's oil field services and equipment. Look at this trend, guys. This thing is beast. It's WFRD, okay? It's called Weatherford International. Just found this. I just got this today. So, look at this. If you were to bought this, and I, I didn't buy it there either, but $2.26... Well, that's that's fifteen hundred percent. That's fifteen hundred percent, basically. I just got it, but I don't see how anything in this sector is like not going to continue to go up. 
SPPP. I made an alert about it like over a week ago. This is um, palladium uh, and platinum. Uptrend on the daily. I mean, this thing eventually is going to have a massive breakup past all time high, which it's like zooming up to, anyways. Um, I talk about this like every day. I've been talking about it for months. I love this one. And Terra Resources. I actually had spotted this. If you guys don't know, you're new to the channel, whatever. I spotted this three year cup and handle a long time ago, and I got uh, people in to buy in here. And we exited and then we got back in and, and we're just you're just uh, running it now I've you can see I've sold it three times and I bought it one two three four five times so I'm, I'm trading it on the hourly but now I'm now that it's tagged purple I'm just probably gonna just kick it because this thing is awesome again ERX is a double leverage energy uptrend and you guys can copy my portfolio I mean my portfolio makes money that's the thing if you ever see me write something like premium technicals in a title Dude, I'm really good at like like finding the ones that are gonna make you money. I don't like to lose money. Like I really don't like it. That's why I work so hard on like this stuff. Um, so all this stuff is the stuff I bought, you know. Um, and it goes through a rigor mortis of like conditions that I am looking for to feel comfortable to buy it. SM Energy. I mean, I'm loaded up on energy. I tell you guys over and over. I put my foot on the gas when the market is right. Right now, it's not right, but it's right in this sector. You know, if you're an investor, it's not right in global and at the gas pump, but it's definitely right for, for buying, investing and trading. EXTN, oil field services, Moss, Mosaic, it's fertilizer, guys. I just got it yesterday. Uh, Friday? What day is today? Oh, today's Monday. I just got this either today or Friday. I don't remember, but I just got it. It's very new to me. Very excited about it. Um, fertilizer. You know, fertilizer, most of it comes from Russia. We need it. We're in a food supply shortage. It just seems like common sense to me. MRO is Marathon Oil, another one. Chevron, oil, gas. I mean, I, I'm really, really doing good with Chevron. It's in my top five um, over on this account. Uh, DBO, Invesco Oil Fund. I mean, I'm just all in that oil and energy right now. PDBC just got the blue ribbons. Let's guess. Optimum yield diversification commodity strategy. Well, commodities is where it's at. We're in like a commodity bull run right now. I think what's going to happen is gas is going to go up to like a hundred, or oil is going to go up to like 150 a barrel, somewhere in that range, one, 145 to 155. And then you and me, we're going to be like, we're not buying gas at that price. And people are going to start quitting their jobs because they can't afford gas to get to their job with the checks. And then you got stagflation, unemployment, recession. It's just, it's going to be like, it's going to be like a Mike Tyson, like, wah, bah, bah, bam, and you're down like one, two, three, you know, it's, just, it's going to hit us hard. Like, it's not going to be like this domino effect. It's going to break. You put an oil embargo in there and then people can't afford the gas and then they quit their jobs and there's unemployment and then boom, bankruptcies, foreclosure. It's just boom, 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 boom. Knockout on the floor, on the mat, done. And it's not, I'm just not talking about the US guys, I'm talking about globally. Like this is gonna be a global problem. From what I understand, Germany is gonna be the first one to go. Um, and that is why you know, I mean, Germany can't can't cut off the oil uh, to Russia, um, and it makes sense. You know, I mean, you can't be mad at them. Like this is like serious. Like this this oil and gas and energy and like, dude, it's coal in Germany and Europe. Like it, it start warming up here sooner, I think. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a problem, guys. I mean, they're gonna have a big recession. China's already uh, said they're having slowing growth. Our country doesn't want to tell us. They want to say we're, we're having this economy that's on fire, but I'm just gonna tell you, that's like the wool over your eyes. Like, don't even, don't even believe it. We have, okay, so I told you guys multiple videos when Jerome Powell came out, he's like, we're at maximum employment. We're, we're, everybody's got jobs. And I was like, bullshit. We have 16 million job openings. Well, the other day in Congress, they were like, we have 11 million job openings. So maybe we filled 5 million since I, since I read the report that I read. But you can't believe all this stuff. You gotta, you gotta just believe me. We're going to stagflation or re recession, and if we go to an oil embargo, we're screwed. <laughs> That's pretty much the truth, though. Um, but look, you know, the, the media's gotta, you know, they gotta kind of, they gotta work it in. Um, speaking of working it in, 
You want to hear some crazy stuff I heard on the news today on Bloomberg, okay, so you can check it. And I heard it and saw it twice today. They said that there was a study done on COVID and they have found that if you even had a mild case of COVID, that your brain could shrink and that you uh, may have some brain damage and lose 10 years off of your lifespan. Study just came out and I heard it on Bloomberg. Google it, I'm sure you can find it. What the fucking fuck? Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? Brain damage? Dude, what is going on? This is like the new world order. Like, this is weird. Wars, pandemics, printing money supply. Like, it's just, dude. Crypto revolution. Riots. People picking sides. It's just... It's just too much right now like it's just it's too much out there i think you know um sorry i know i'm all over the place uh calm com i like this auspicious broad commodity strategy i've had it uh, for a few days and now i'm up on it and i'm really looking forward to just holding it i like it feny is another one i bought this in the fidelity account it's the fidelity energy index uh, VDE is a Vanguard energy index. I just go where the money is. They're all energy. Gold. I like gold right now. I mean, I can't go wrong with gold. Bitcoin. I, I just, I love Bitcoin. I'm just out of a trade currently. I've been in a trade constantly. You can tell how much I've been trading it, but sometimes you need a break from having to monitor it so much. Um, SBSW, it's a uh, Sybane Stillwater. You know, I mean, it's profitable. It's good. Conoco Phillips, you know, uptrend. I want to be in the uptrend if I'm going long. I want to be in the downtrend if I'm going down. I don't want to chop sideways. I want to be directional. This, my friends, this is a nice direction. We're going up, you know. Um, I don't. I just. I don't want to go sideways. I just. I'd rather not trade. I'd rather just go out on the boat, chill. Maybe. Maybe light up a cigar. Maybe like sneak a little cocktail in there, or whatever. But. Oh, AMR, love this. I highly recommend this for you guys. It's coal, and I just love the chart, and I love the stock. Cleveland Cliff, excuse me. Cleveland Cliff is steel. Steel got wrecked today. I don't really know why it got wrecked, but everything's in an uptrend, and I'm sure it'll just bounce back. I'm not worried about it. Cane, sugar cane, I just got it today. I'm, I'm kind of excited. I just got cane and nickel. Or two of the new ones I got today. I'm expanding my commodity portfolio. And I like it. I like trading commodity. I just like trading everything. I kind of want to trade Forex. I've never done it, but I'm very intrigued by it. I also want to learn um, Elliott Wave Theory. I've, I've been like dabbling behind the scenes, but some guys are really good with it. Uh, I'm not. I'm really good with technical analysis, but not Elliott Wave. But I can't. couldn't say that. But I'm very interested in that. I think it's cool. Um yeah, so PSA, this is public storage, um, LNG, liquid natural gas, NRP, I think this one had a little choppy of a day. Oh, I sold it. I did. I sold it. I must not, I remember not liking something, but now that I'm looking at it on the daily, I'm wondering what the hell, bro? Only went down 30 cents. I think it was down more than that. Yeah, I think I, I, think I screwed up. I got to get back in that. BHP. Uptrend, um, Occidental, Petroleum, I mean, it's like crazy, dude. I'm down a little bit, but I actually just got in this. Kroger, I like it. It had its first down day since I've been in it. Hold on, I got somebody on my uh, camera system at the house. Oh, that's weird. All right, Energy U, um, Triple Leverage, Oil Energy. I, I trade this all the time. I love it. I highly recommend it. Dangerous, okay? But you're in the right sector. How could you really go wrong? But you will fluctuate crazy. I mean, I started getting this at like 220. It's at 384 now. Um, Maddox, love this one. It's had a few, had, had like a handful. Of, I was up 25 grand on this. I'm still in it. Um, I haven't sold it. it, it I'm just assuming it's going to continue its uptrend. It's just having a little like... You know, like they always do. Um, hopefully, I'm not wrong, but it, I think it's cool. It does transportation in the uh, marine transportation. Uh, the India market's about to open. 
Okay, uh, KBR, Information Tech, UAN, CBR Partners, Process Industries, also had a little bit of a rough day, but really like this one. I've been in this for like up, I've been trading in and out of this for a long time, almost, God, almost like eight months now, it seems like. SCCO is copper, okay. And you guys, I'm only going through all this so you guys can write it down. I just want you to understand my style. I'm hunting momentum, I trade in the trend, I enter a specific way. I'm letting them run now because I believe we're in a bull run in this sector only. And uh, I've migrated my money. In fact, I only have $88,000 that's not in. I'm almost 100% invested right now, but all my stuff's going up because the way I, you know, what I'm buying, you know? And when I find something that I wait for, you know, I'm like, ooh, that's a nice uptrend. And then I back it down on the time frame and I wait for it to dip. And right when it kind of gets to like a bullish pivot on a low, low time frame, even like the minute, that's when I'll scoop it up. And I have just different ways. It's like driving a car. It's like you got to hit the brake sometimes. Sometimes you got to put a blinker on. Sometimes you got to do a lane change. Sometimes you got to, you know, do a whole donut, you know. <laughs> you just got to you just gotta have all your little gauges, you know, windshield wipers. You know, you got to put the little seat massager on. And you got to put the seat heater on for the girl next to you. And, you know, you got to turn the tunes up. You just got all your little adjustments, you know. And that's how I trade, you know. I'm just constantly, you know, thinking it all through, looking at all the time frames and, um you know assessing everything all the time and just so you know the way i do it is i see on the one hour but i check the daily and i check the minute while i'm doing it and i just click 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 and in my head i'm like hold 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 you know what i mean and i'm just if it's sketchy i'm like okay how sketchy is this red am i still in here is it is it tagged perfectly like i'm just assessing you know so Anderson, I haven't been too lucky with this one yet. I love the trend, but ever since I bought it, I haven't made any money on it yet. But I'm going to hold it. I like it. Um, Zim, I mean, I'm down on it, but I was way up on this. It just had a couple of really rough days in my last trade. So, I, I mean, I, I can't argue with this uptrend. It's going to work itself out. Um, tech, I mean, I just got profitable. I was down on it. Now I'm up. So that's cool. And I really like that one. And I think I even said in the other video when I was down, I was like, look at the trend. It'll, it'll work itself out. Here we are. I'm up a tiny bit now. Uh, aluminum. I got this one from one of the Je Jedis and uh, very grateful. This is the one I'm short on. I just shorted it um, today, and uh, which is the day before you're seeing this video. I just shorted it, and uh, it's just a little short. I didn't go in too heavy. And, uh, I mean, Bitcoin was coming down, so... I don't really like longing and shorting all these like correlated stocks to crypto. I'd rather just trade crypto because if something happens in crypto, which it seems to always do in the middle of the night and it rallies the opposite way, by the time the stock market opens, you either need to be up hella early in the pre-market or um, or you're going to get a little wrecked, you know. And, but remember, I'm short and we're in an overall downturn on Bitcoin still. So I got that going for me. Okay, last one, did not do good on this at all today, but I did not sell it either, um, STLD. Now I did buy one called Zeus, Olympic Zeus, which was steel, and I sold it out of one account, I had bought it in two accounts. It depends where I have money, like, I, you know, like sometimes I'm tapped out until I sell something, you know, like everybody I'm sure, but STLD I kept, um, uh, and I kept STLD and Zeus in the other account. So I still, and I'm down, I'm actually down on that. I lost a lot on um, Zeus in one day. I bought it and I'm already down like 6%. So I'm just like, what the hell? But I mean, you, you can't get it perfect every time. Like I usually will hit like seven out of 10 times. That's a pretty straightforward uh, rule of thumb for me. Um, I do have certain times when I enter into momentum and everything turns accordingly and it's algorithmic. I might be in that eight, nine uh, range. Um, but if it's real choppy and I, I, I can't click through fast enough or execute fast enough, like, you know, I might lose some gains or, or take some losses and bring me back down to seven, you know, but it's okay. I'm okay with seven to 10. What I do is I keep my position size pretty much the same uh, or very relative to the same. And then if I have to, I just double down uh, into momentum off the pivot like I showed you, or if it's a super, super bullish stock, I'll double down on that regardless. Just to, Or if it's almost like a reverse hedge, if like something's really going up and other ones are falling, I'll put more money into the winner that's running up to kind of like drag, keep the portfolio like going in the right direction. 
Um, Grin is another shipping one. All shipping got wrecked today, but I mean, look at the uptrend. Don't don't overthink it. Don't worry. This is another one I'm down on a little bit. Um, but look at the uptrend. Okay, so and it looks like I did not take a full position on this, so I can buy a lot more if this thing wants to come down and do that pivot. I can buy into that. Um, although I'm getting a little low on money, so it's because I'm holding overnight. Like when I was day trading, I'd be like. Bye, 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 sell, sell, sell. So I'd always have my money settled, but now I'm like holding all these positions, like 40 of them, and I'm like, what the heck? Now, and then in the other account, I got a lot too. So uh, GSM, I'm down on this one. I actually had to buy it two more times today. Um, I keep, I, w I thought about selling it, and then I talked myself into twice buying more because I feel like, okay, process industries, okay, um, industrial special, special, specialties sorry and uh it's in the right it's in the right sector okay this is like uh gas and energy and it's bullish on the daily and it, it had a bad day i just happened to buy it when like everything was topped out and then it came down but i'm i'm buying it down like averaging down into an uptrend so i feel good about that and then my one that was number one i was actually up 62 percent on this at one point and now i'm more like 40 uh, it came down a lot today. It came down 16.51. At one point, it was over 20% down. It really wrecked. Um, but I'm still in it. I'm holding it, and I love it. And tomorrow will probably be number one. It's coal. I bought this uh, originally at like 16 bucks. And one of the Jedis in the in the group gave me this one. His name is Boku. Uh, cool dude. Kind of shy, but he's he's good chartist. He's good te good with technicals. Uh, let's go look at the other one. So a lot of them are going to be the same. So we already looked at in. INDO, BBAI, Wheat, Yang, okay. There's my hedges, SQQQ, SPXU, SDAO, CF. So far, they're all, all the same. Uh, oh, here's one that wasn't in the other account, EXTN. So EXTN is an oil field service. Um, PDBC, uh, just got this one. Um, I think we did talk about that. DBA, I don't know if we talked about this one. This one's pretty cool. Look at that. Um, agricultural fund. Anything agricultural. Just got a Fidelity or Vanguard or um, all the big places have them. Uh, you get an agricultural fund. I got corn. I've had corn for like a week or something. It's it's doing great. Um, let's see. We talked about that. I don't think I showed you Val. It's just another oil and energy chart. LABD is betting that biotech's coming down. Gush is another triple leverage. Uh, oil and energy. Uh, I told you about Kroger. Yeah, so I guess it's kind of almost the same thing. And that's that doesn't it won't always be like that. It's just that number one, I like all the charts, so I've probably gotten rid of anything that was a little sketchy or off for me, and then I've kind of just got all my money into the good charts. Uh, but notice how there are some blue ones in here. That means they're not bullish to the daily, so you got to monitor them. Pink means I've lost money on it before and I'm trying to get my money back. I call that revenge trading. I teach you about that in the course is how to get all your money back that you lost. Take your losses so that they don't turn into big bleeders, but then we're going to make a, a, a revenge watch list and we're going to go back after it and get all that money back. That's not, that's, I don't, I'm not in the business of lending the, the excuse me, uh, lending the market money. I'm not a banker. And if I do, I want my points. I want my vid. So, I'm not, you know, if I'm going to lend the bank some money, the, the market some money, I want it back. So I tag it pink and then I and then I wait for the wash thing to end and I find the per I've had to wait like nine months for a chart. Like I had, um, oh God, there's tons of, there's so many I couldn't even talk about it. Uh, I've had to wait, like, you know, stuff comes down. I, I lost like 14 grand on, like one was that uh, Virgin Galactic Space. I lost a bunch on that. I lost... I lost money on CRISPR once. Uh, there's, I mean, there's so pages and pages of stuff I've taken loss. I take losses on stuff every day, guys. I just win more than I lose. Um, but yeah, so I tag it pink, and uh, obviously this is in my top ten for gainers, so I probably made it back. And then I get to, you know, either take it out and just be happy with it. But why would I do that if I'm trending up? It looks like, looks like we can milk some more money out of this thing, uh, to be honest. So. Uh, looks like this is actually going to go to a blue ribbon and come out of pink and go to purple. And then that's one off of my revenge trade. And you got to stay on the revenge trades throughout the year. Because if you want to just, if you try to just do it all in the last quarter, what ends up happening is the market will, will throw you a monkey wrench. Everything will be good. You'll be like, oh yeah, I'm good. I've made money. 
And then all of a sudden it'll start dropping on you. And then those ones will drop too. And you can't even revenge trade out of them. And then you're losing money and you got to get out of market. So it's just best to like keep your revenge list somewhat small and be working on it the whole year I've learned. Um, and it's just a little game I play. So look, I'm going to end it there. I really, I really appreciate all the new Jedi's coming in. I can't wait to do the one-on-ones. I can't wait for the wheelhouse Wednesday guys. It's 50% off for the annual. All the trade alerts, okay? And I go ham. You can see, I go ham, and all my stuff makes money. Like, go in there. Well, you guys won't be able to be in the Jedi chat until you upgrade. But when you are, dude, you'll see all these people be like, bro, I did this. I did this. Look at this chart. Oh, I did exactly like I said. Oh, I just made a bunch of money. Like, just constant. Like, they're killing it. So, it's really cool to see. Um, so, look. Come in there. Uh, you can be in there for free. But if you go to subscriptions, you can do the 99 a month. Uh, and you can fill it out, see what you want, and that gives you everything. Uh, or you can do, and this isn't as good for me, but it's way better for you. You can do the annual, and then you're never going to think about it again. And then you can take the 50% off coupon. It costs you 665 bucks, which is super worth it because I think what I teach you is worth like 100 grand plus easy. Uh, and you just basically, you know, you get all the Jedi and all elite areas, all those extra chat areas. Um, you get all the, you know, there's voice channels in there too. Get the one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, 10 hours of that, just you and me. Um, you get the um, all the courses, of course, the, and you get the um, the trade alerts, which is like sick, you know, um, which is which is cool because I do all the trade alerts, you know, because I move fast and I don't talk a lot in the Discord throughout the day. I get in there four or five times a day, like little things, but I'm very focused on trading in the day and I tell everybody that. But as soon as the market closes, I'm all in there and I'm always doing alerts because I, I trade. Like I get the music on, I get the Bloomberg going, I'm trading. Like I'm just in the zone. Uh, it's, I don't want you guys to lose money. So I want to focus, you know, in the day and make sure I'm like hitting the alerts perfect. And it's, they should pop up right on your phone, like right after I do it. And it'll say, I bought this, you know, uh, and then you can just grab it. And then uh, I'll say when I sell it. And usually if I'm trading on the hourly, I'm in a trade for like 10 hours. Um, if I'm trading pretty tight, they're usually like two sessions uh, in and out. But right now I'm, I'm trying to hold overnight because I'm seeing a little bit of a bull run in these commodities. And I might just actually start uh, issuing stop losses for you guys um, and, and, you know, just putting some capital protection into big momentum and letting it swing and uh, go from there. Because I'm feeling, feeling like this isn't going to go away with inflation, that war and uh, a global crisis with this oil. And if we have an oil embargo you're definitely going to want to be loaded up on oil like I am. So look, let's end it there. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for watching to the end and uh, welcome to the wheelhouse.